from your Instagram. Yeah. And your Instagram's good. 39 people watching. Yeah. All right, we ready? We got 39 people on Instagram. YouTube is getting it in. All right, here we go, y'all. NJ Weed Bands, get on the can of bus. Wow, podcast. Listen, the podcast has changed a lot over the last few months. We've been so successful here that I had to move. I, I, there's no place for me to do, even do my podcast no more. All inside there is people selling weed. <laughs> Which is a great thing. Business is booming. All right? So we're outside, chilling, the side yard, the bench. And I don't know what I'm going to talk about today. I'm just going to babble on and on and on about whatever the hell I want to talk about. But one thing I want to talk about is that picture right up there, that mural. Adjust the cameras and see the mural. I want to explain that mural. I want y'all to look at it. Look at it good. Obviously, that's me in the middle. Everything in there is symbolic of something. For instance, I'm standing there with a slingshot. A slingshot, you know, is Bible talk. You know, David and Goliath. So here I am, the little guy, even though I look like the big guy in this picture. But I'm holding the slingshot across the street from City Hall. My building's across the street. And these are the characters a couple years ago that all tried to lynch me and put me in, in, in jail, my legal lynching. So if you look over there, the guy with the white shirt on, with the black eye, the bloody nose, and the red ass, that's the Mercer County prosecutors, Mr. Ornfrey. Prior, after they arrested me in April of 2016, I promised in several newspapers and a radio show station that I was going to whoop his ass. Well, he's up there with a red ass. So that's depicting the prosecutor's office, the prosecutor, Mr. Humphrey, <laughs> with a red ass. The two prosecutors on the ground, those are assistant prosecutors. One being Miss Stephanie Katz. She's a, the number two prosecutor in Mercer County. And she personally decided to, you know, be the trial prosecutor against me. And she got her ass whooped too. That's why she's laid there. Knock the fuck out! And then we got John Boyle, who is like her assistant or something. He's uh, another one of the guys in the prosecutor's office that take the big cases. And you see he's knocked the hell out. At my feet is this rat. See, it says Z-E-V, Zev. That's because that's the name of the rat. Zev Lapidus. He was the rat that talked a bunch of shit to the cops in the prosecutor's office that got me locked up for 447 days. Even though they couldn't get a, they could not get a conviction on me, he is the reason why I did 447 days. Because I called him a rat publicly, they locked me up. The judge over there, Judge Massey, I got a noose around his neck because he's the hanging judge. He tried to lynch me and hang me, but it backfired. He's got the noose on his, his own neck. Over there in the corner, I call it Hefty Bag Hayburn, big fat fucker called Hayburn, who uh, was my lawyer. He kind of switched sides on me in the middle of trial. <laughs> I'm suing him, and uh, I don't know. Because of coronavirus, we haven't had a trial, but we're all trial ready and ready to go. I don't think no jury is going to exonerate him of this shit. So we'll see what happens. I sued him. He countersued me. No, he counter he sued me. I countersued him. His suit got thrown out. And here I am. My countersuit is running. And I have no intention of taking a settlement. I don't want a dollar from him. I want $10,000 from him. I want a jury to award me whatever they want to award me. All right? And of course, the SWAT team is represented right there because this place where we're at right here, this very building that this is painted on, was raided by the Trenton SWAT team, you know, for a little bit of butter. Their case got dismissed. Yes, they actually got some weed by a pound and a half of weed, some edibles, some pipes and bombs. But their case got dismissed. They got dismissed by the prosecutor's office because they were getting their asses whooped constantly. And what the hell? Most of the charges got dismissed anyway. They didn't want to be embarrassed, so they dismissed that, that, that case. And it's part of the reason why they don't arrest me now, because there's no room to put no more prosecutors laid out up there for one on my picture. 
Uncle Sam, he just sits and watches it all. You know, Uncle Sam, federally, marijuana is always illegal. So Uncle Sam's got to be depicted in there because he's watching it all happen. He's watching the state get away with breaking federal law, licensing big, rich, white guys to sell marijuana while they're still arresting little guys for weed. So that's why he's depicted. And for those of you from the Trenton area, or just Google Officer Flowers versus NJ Weed Man. Really, if you're watching this or listening to this podcast, Google, or you can put it in YouTube videos. That's what I really want you to watch in the YouTube video. Type in NJ Weed Man versus Officer Flowers. I had an incident right here, right out there, where Officer Flowers came here basically trying to tell me to shut up. And I flipped the script on him and flipped out on him. You know, it wasn't one of my brighter moments. Um, but I don't think I was telling the telling the uh, a lie. Um, I talked a lot of shit about it. And they even, go ahead, you go on through. They even indicted me, but so what? They dismissed them charges too. Uh, no good. So that's what that, that's what that mural depicts. I call it the Battle of Trenton. Symbolic of the original Battle of Trenton between the colonists, the revolutionaries, uh, uh, and the Russian, I mean, the, the German Hessian soldiers who were fighting for the British here in Trenton. This was the, in this city was the first battle that the revolutionaries, the, the colonists won. So I kind of like, I don't know, stealing that swagger. I'm saying here in this war, I won too, right here in Trenton. And I don't know, I'm looking at it the same way. So that's what that mural represents. And last month I had this artist, a very, very well-known artist named Sano. If you look him up, he, he, he goes by the name Sano. He calls his picture Sano-isms. So right over there is a Sano-ism. S-A-N-O-I-Z-M, a Sano-ism. He, he, he paints all over the world, y'all. Y'all look, he has paintings in Japan, all over Asia, all over America. And he came here and drew that for me. So I got a Sanoism right here in Trenton, New Jersey. The Battle of Trenton. Um, anyway, lately I've been going back and forth from Trenton, New Jersey to Miami. Where a couple months ago I got approached about being a partner in a club and after a few weeks of me going back and forth and a couple charades from the guys down there, because there was a couple guys that were basically pitching me to be a, a part of something, be a part of a, a group of people that opened this club. Well, after a couple weeks of going down there, I realized that these guys did not have the, had the lease to the building. Um, a little while later, I found out that one of them used to have a lease, but the landlord had sued them, took the lease back, and kicked them out. So, them bringing me down there was really trying to, I guess, pay the back rent. And I would have been stuck with a new lease paying rent. So anyway, long story short, I approached the, the, the landlord directly himself. After looking at a couple other places and realizing the first place I looked at, the first place they showed me was the best place. So I went back, instead of calling it a done deal, I approached the landlord directly. When I approached him directly, we worked out a deal, and now we're going to have the Joint of Miami. You can Google that. You can type it directly in the URL. TheJointOfMiami.com. All one word. TheJointOfMiami.com. That's what I've been working on lately, people. Because why? Because I refuse to get off the Canna bus. Right here in New Jersey, obviously, I've refused to get off the Canada bus, refused to get to the back, and we're operating a thriving Canada business right here. And, you know, I've been content being a black marketeer or being part of the legacy market for a while. But you know what I did today? I did the first step towards filling out an application. Got a lawyer for an application to make this place legal. Uh, one of the first things you need is you need local government approval. So, had a meeting today with the with the mayor of Trenton, with my lawyer, and the city of Trenton appears to be ready to give me 
allow me a license, at least give me the letter. I think there's a couple of city council members that might go before them. It might be some issues. I don't know. But uh, I think I'm going to get a letter from the city saying, you know, make this place illegal. Make this place legal. <laughs> it's already illegal. So let's make it legal. And the mayor was receptive to it. A couple of city council members, I believe, are. And I'm going to try to get, a, get a appointments with a couple others. So there's the personal news especially when it comes to my whole advocation of, you know, refusing to get off the bus. Looks like, looks like, uh, you know, might, might work out, might work out. My tactic might have worked. Instead of getting off the bus, I refused. And here I am now. Not only is it possible, I see now, for this to possibly happen to be legal, but this other opportunity opened up for me in Miami, so there's not only going to be a the joint, NJ Weedman's joint here at Trent, New Jersey, but bam, come July, there's going to be a joint of Miami. Check it out, thejointofmiami.com. Any questions on, on uh, Instagram? I can't see them from here. People are excited. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Listen, I hung in there. I duped it out. I don't feel nobody gave me nothing. I fought for it. I think I fought for it all. However it works out, I'm down with it. I'm down with it. Uh, where was I? I lost my train of thought, y'all. <laughs> How y'all doing? All good? Yeah, so, as you can see from people, People go in this way, this is how they go in. We just recently changed things up where they go out the other door. But they come in this door. And lately after about five, six o'clock, we get that mad rush between six o'clock and eight o'clock when we close. It's all good, y'all. It's all good, how y'all doing? <laughs> We're just doing a podcast, don't worry about it. It's all good. <laughs> Someone's asking if you're hiring. Am I hot? Am In the I Trenton hiring? Spot. Where? Trenton spot. You know what? The Trenton spot, I'm going to need the Trenton joint. I know I'm going to need a couple cooks. I haven't announced it yet, but I'm going to need a couple cooks. One or two employees that are here in Trenton, they want to go to Miami. So yes, I think, I'm not announcing it yet. If you're watching this, Yes, you're hearing a mini announcement. Maybe about a week or so, I'll probably put out there that we need five employees. Somewhere around five or six by by June 1st, five or six employees, all right? Uh, I'm getting ready to do a, uh, a uh, staffing service with the workman's comp and all that to be legit above board, pay taxes, all that. So if you're looking for an under the table job, hey, I've offered that for the last couple years, but now I'm going above board and I'm getting a staffing service and going to pay the workman's comp and pay all the income tax and all that stuff. Uh, uh, so yes, if you're interested in a job, hit me up around the first of next month. Well, make it about, I'd say the middle of this month, the middle of May, the middle of May. I should have the staffing service in place by then. All right, and then I'm gonna hire a few people just to, just to answer. And if you're talking about Miami, if you look at the Joint of Miami page, I'm actually gonna have a little job fair on May 29th. And it's gonna be in the morning until about 12, one, two o'clock in the afternoon, and you gotta be there in order to get hired. Because there's people all over the country who have been hitting me up already. They wanna come, they wanna pay, they wanna do that. But if they're not there, if they're not on the ground, then there's, no way I can hire you because I don't know if you're gonna make it by opening. I want people to be there anyway before opening. I wanted to have a little training session for a week or two before we actually open, have like a soft opening before we have a grand opening. So you gotta be on the ground in Miami to get that job. All right, but right here, these people right here close by, yes, in a couple weeks, people are gonna be leaving here and going to the Miami location and I'm doing a few other things around here that I'm gonna need a couple couple employees. For instance, I say cooks because we're going to extend our hours later into the night. Um, 
our restaurant is actually closed right now because we just threw away all the refrigerators and freezers and all that. And we're getting all new ones this week. We're doing a whole deep cleaning and deep, you know, just redoing everything, painting the kitchen. So, yeah, a couple weeks. Um, I don't even know where else to go. Any other questions out there? <clears throat> What's the entertainment schedule going to be like in Miami? Oh man, entertainment schedule in Miami is going to be off the hook. If you go check it out right now, the only thing being advertised is is uh, the grand opening lineup. The grand opening lineup um, is going to consist of a few celebrities too, by the way. We've got DJ Alamo. He's a uh, very well-known, especially on the East Coast, very well-known DJ. DJs for some of the celebrities out there. Um, Freeway, the rapper out of Philly, um, he's going to be on a on a on a on a lineup for Saturday, July 3rd. And then there's this female DJ out of Miami called DJ Riri. She has a huge following. She has reggae and hip hop, and we're doing reggae on that Friday, July 2nd. So she's the DJ. We don't have an artist yet for that lineup. And on Sunday. I'm gonna do it kind of like here on Sundays. There, we're gonna do Grateful Dead and that type of music. So we got a, a, a band that's very big in South Florida called Crazy Fingers. No, Crazy Legs. No, Crazy Fingers. Crazy Fingers is gonna be the the, the the headliner on Sunday. But the thing is, Saturday and Sunday are gonna be long days. We're gonna start off at like four o'clock in the afternoon. We're gonna go until 12, 1, 2 o'clock. So. There's gonna be random artists all day. That's the grand opening weekend. But then after that, we're gonna have a schedule with certain things. I think Fridays are gonna be reggae down there. I think Saturdays gonna be hip hop or pop music. Sundays, like I said, is gonna be uh, 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 different Grateful Dead or rock or alternative or whatever. We're gonna do that for Sundays. Um, Tuesday and Wednesdays, I think it's gonna be art, more art stuff, whether it's poetry, spoken word type stuff. Um, some type of maybe a pop-up I don't know but we're not we're not there yet we're still I'm still hiring down there if you look at the website the joint of and click on the little button the little drop-down menu on the, on the left hand side and you'll see staff you click staff and from there there's a list of people but you'll notice the one thing is not hired yet position not hired is the booking agent. I think the booking manager might be a guy from here, from New Jersey. Dio. I think Dio is going to be the booking guy. They, they get to him to talk to the acts and put the acts together. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure on that yet either. Um, but that's where we're at, people. I'm having, I'm having a good year this year. I don't know what happened. At the beginning of the year, I said I made a New Year's resolution that I just I just need to move on, move, just get moving. I feel like I've been stuck and stagnant right here in Trenton, right here in this place for a while. I feel like I've been successful as far as pushing the envelope. I ain't going nowhere. I'm the last man standing. And now it's time for the last man standing to move on. Moving on to Miami, y'all. Um, I'll always still be the New Jersey weed man. And at least for a while, I'll be traveling back and forth from New Jersey to Miami, you know, but for a little while, at least for a little while. Any other questions? Somebody asked about uh, being a vendor. I don't know if that's here. Outside a vendor where? Here? Yeah. Um, for events, when I know there's going to be a lot of people, we do have vendors. And if you want to be a vendor, what you need to do is go to our Facebook page, inbox the Facebook page for NJ Weedman's joint, and speak to Debbie. Debbie being the booking manager here. Debbie's the partner here. And she does all the booking, so you talk to her. Debbie will hook, hook you up. Anybody else? Any other questions out there? Somebody's asking if you live in Miami right now. No. <clears throat> No, I'm staying here. I've been flying down there to stay for two days in a hotel and fly back. Actually, last time I flew down there, I flew down there, and I actually slept in the joint down there. In fact, two days in a row, I slept in the joint. Got up and did a whole bath in the sink. 
Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but um, we checked into a, an Airbnb, me and my son. My son ran an Airbnb for the month. So next time I go down there, I'm staying in the house. Um, at some point, you know, he's going to get a little apartment. I'll probably get a little apartment. Who knows how we'll do it, you know? But for at least the next month, we ain't paying for hotels no more. I mean, I think one one week we paid almost two thousand dollars in hotel fees between the three of us through two or three different. But we all paid, you know, two hundred dollars a night for three nights. You know, like, we ain't doing that no more. So no, we're gonna get an Airbnb. Uh, you know, we got this reality show that started filming us too out of Miami, and that's one thing they want to do. They kind of wanted to get their cribs. You know, where we're, where we're home in Miami, we're putting this stuff together. They want to get us when we're ready to fly and fly up to here and catch us here. You know, they're trying to call us the Kardashians of Kush too, by the way, since I got my whole family working for us, you know? They don't know if they can actually use that word, the Kardashians of Kush, we might have some copyright issues, but that's what they're laughing about. They're, whoa, this guy, Weed Man, this guy's got all his kids working for him selling Kush. So they're like the Kardashians of Kush, <laughs> the weed, the weedmans of Kush. <laughs> uh, any, any other questions? We gotta get a monitor so I can read the questions. Oh, and by the way, not this Monday coming up, but the following Monday, we're gonna do a show from Miami. I'm gonna bring my two producers down there. They're gonna come down there. We'll probably do a walk through of the whole place, do a big introduction. Uh, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of acts out there who want to see the place. Um, the stage should be there. It got ordered a few days ago. It's going to get delivered. We already got the trust, trust, trellis system up. We got the DJ st uh, uh, station put together. There's big time speakers in there. The bar is all set up. Basically, it's a whole bunch of little stuff. The food trucks got to be brought down there. The backyard just got a just got uh, the, 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 the astro turf for the grass. It's looking good, it's getting put together. It's, it's, it's gonna be that million dollar club, y'all. It's gonna be that hot spot in Wynwood. We already been getting a lot of publicity already. I mean, the Miami Herald did a nice article on it. The New Miami Times did a nice article on it. And I saw a couple bloggers out there uh, uh, reposting it. I had people showing up taking pictures of the place the other day when I was down there, so it's making a splash already. At some point, uh, this, this by the way, is not just a music venue. It's going to be a music and art venue. And the fact of the matter is, the place is, being, is in Wynwood, which is the art district, so I'm not sure exactly how that schedule's going to work out. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe a Thursday, it's going to be more art, and on the weekends, it'll be more music. We ain't sure exactly how it's all gonna work out. I still got a couple more people to put in place. And once those people are all in place, we'll work out schedules, work out bookings, things like that. Anything else? Other than that, I think I'm gonna cut it short. No, I don't know what I wanna bitch about. And now here comes the bitching session. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Man. Look at my Instagram page and all these fakers, all these swagger jackers that are just taking my pictures, taking my image, and they're ripping potheads off. Listen, if you're a pothead, if you're a cannabis consumer, and you see these pages, they're using my face and my image, all they're doing is ripping off people like you. That's what they're doing. They're ripping off potheads, they're scamming, they're fake. What you gotta do is report them. Every time you spot one, report them. If I can get basically my followers to constantly report them, maybe the jackass that keeps on doing it will stop. But he does get some money. I've had so many people hit me up saying they got they lost 200, they lost 700, somebody lost 2300. They were the guys probably made fifty thousand dollars the last six months. I think it's the same guy, black guy with a slight accent, can't spell. Um, he probably watched this. Uh, since he steals all my pictures, he takes them right off my Instagram, so he definitely watches. I wish I knew who he was, I could block him, but I can't. Um, at one point, I thought he lived in Virginia. I don't know, I had somebody doing a, 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 a IP check on him at some point. He came up with a California address, and 
I don't know. Who knows how? Who knows? I went to the FBI twice about it, saying this guy's committing cyber crimes using my face, and they didn't seem to do anything about it. Um, I mean, the guy makes fake pages and puts guns and stuff on sale for him. So I'm like hoping one day the ATF doesn't show up, thinking I'm really selling guns. You know, there have been people that showed up thinking I just ripped them off. So why? Wouldn't an FBI agent or some type of law enforcement think of selling guns and bullshit like this guy posts online? Now, most people are smart enough to realize that that's a big page and they don't buy into it. But there are some people, like I said, they fall for it. They send the guy money. I'm sure there are people out there trying to buy guns and trying to buy all kinds of shit online. And they're buying it from this guy. And it's a big page, a scammer page. Scam, scam, scam. Fraud page. All right. In another, in another thread, uh, any advice for the small timers coming up? Any advice? Listen, I say just do it. Act like Nike and just do it. It's a gray area right now. Um, so, I mean, I know, I know numerous people right now who are just doing it. You know, I, I'm glad they're using my example. Show later. I'm glad they're using my example. A lot of people are seeing me doing what I'm doing. And they're moving forward and they're doing it too. And I recommend other people do it. Right now in New Jersey, they are really not prosecuting people for marijuana. Even though the laws and everything haven't been fully changed yet, right now we're in the gray area. The, the Attorney General of the state said to all the prosecutors, 21 or 23 prosecutors in the state, he told them not to prosecute people. So if that is off the table, your prosecution, why shouldn't you be growing? Why shouldn't you be selling? You should jump in now. And listen, the more and more people who are involved in this marijuana legalization as they make rules, the more and more they're gonna to have to, I don't know if the right word is grandfather or man, but they're gonna to have to work it out. They're gonna to have to figure out a way to make people legal. That's kind of what I said two or three years ago. I said, you know what? I'm selling weed like a white. I'm not getting off this can of bus. And I just said, I'm just doing it. And we'll see how it works out. And like I said, today I actually talked to the mayor today. Today there's a, there's a lawyer on my team now who's actually putting together an application to submit. Now, unfortunately, uh, the CRC board in the state has not even put it all together what rules and regulations are going to apply. So I tell everybody out there, go for it. Even if you just start out with a quickie little storefront, and selling a little bit of weed and you build up until you have money and keep on going. I did that in LA. I remember I put $7,500 worth of weed, eight, nine different quarters, and started selling. Had one customer the first, had just two or three customers the first day, second day, 10. By the end of the week, I had 100 or so a day. And it worked for me in LA, starting from scratch. From here, I didn't really start from scratch because I've been talking shit. I've been a New Jersey weed man forever. So once I said I'm selling weed openly, people came. And but I tell other people out there, go for it. I mean, I know, I know at least six black market uh, or legacy market, whatever word. Now it's become cliche to call it the legacy market instead of black market. But anyway, the black market, the legacy market. I know at least six operations going on between Trenton and Camden right now. Uh, Somebody contacted me recently from Atlantic City, want me to come down and check out their location. And I'm down on doing that. Uh, and I know without even going there, up North Jersey, Newark, Patterson, places like that, to say that there are there has to be locations up there that I just don't know about. But the legacy market needs to needs to claim it. You know? Stop hiding in the closet. Get off the can of bus. Oops. I said that backwards. <laughs> Get on the can of bus. Get on the can of bus. And with that, I'm done. No guests today. We know walk through selling weed. Everybody knows what I'm doing. Oh, I know what? Yo, last day. Guess who's coming here on Friday? Vice. Vice is coming here on Friday to, hit, to interview me about all this. So, bam, get to a Vice. Peace. Jersey weed man, superhero to his ganja smokers, fighting for the rights of sight, but it's over, indicted and choked him, every time he battled and spoke of him, 
politicians getting at him with them government posters. Judges with jokers, through the laws, refused to uphold them. Only made the weed man stronger. His group would expose him, refusing to vote. Every time he plead a proposal, Mary Jane, she ain't bad, she's just a legal to smoke. Cross the religion, roots come from Buffalo soldiers. Now they want to jail the weed man because he practices most of taking advantages over. Watch a rap, but he blow When this thing hit the radio, we gon' smash him by soldiers. They gon' learn how to court system. Badger that fortune, he took his license and his truck. It cost him a fortune. Stand up for your right, 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 up in the sky, some bird is a plane. It's the new Jersey weed man, bumping every day, doing his thing. Ain't nobody cooler this man, and it's never gonna change. He's too clever for a man. Look up in the sky, some bird is a plane. It's the new Jersey weed man, bumping every day, doing his thing. Ain't nobody cooler this man. He's too clever for a man, and it's never gonna change. You gotta get him. Stand up, fight for your rights. If you won't, he will back you to the press. Get it right. New Jersey weed man took the Rob Marley the heart. They took his daughter's last name. I bring it out of the dark. 420 up in Philly, Independence Park. That's where the people get together and they smoke from the heart. He's on a quest to change the name into Peace Pie Park. Brothers and sisters gather round, let the session start. He smoked a joint at the courthouse. He wanted a fight. They took him away in shackles and refused his invite. They asked him for DNA. He said, get it off your lips. You can kiss my ass, you bureaucratic punk bitch. Excuse me while I light my split. Oh Lord, I wanna take a list. Now who's this New Jersey weed man? That con, yo, he ready to leave for his people and his beliefs. Yo, he ready to flee. Roll up a Dutch mask up with a handful of trees. Take a token, they'll back you. We supposed to be free. Home of the brave. Shit, this the home of the slave. Only have room for two verses. This the end of the page. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's the New Jersey weed man. Fuckin' Mary Jane doing his thing. Ain't nobody coolin' this thing. And it's never gonna change, he's too clever for me. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's the new Jersey weed man. Fucking every day, doing this thing. Ain't nobody fooling this man. He's too clever for me, and it's never gonna change. Now let me show everybody that we're we, we at the joint. 